All right, so we've only got about two hours worth. So I mean, if you fall asleep, we're good. But no, um, Jason put together a presentation here, and so there's probably going to be some people that'll have some questions. And so what we'll probably try and do is we go through each each slide. Um, at the end of it, I'll ask if anybody has questions pertaining that, and then we can move on. Um, and then if there's anything pertaining the all-star side of it, he's a technical guru. I'm just the ditch digger. So I've uh, been, been blessed to have him come and participate in this because largely the, the 220 system as it stands today is a, is a product of his technical direction, along with some other folks too. Obviously there's a lot of people involved in it in, in the background, but uh, result found out at Dayton a, uh, a 220 repeater brought it home and uh, bootlegged it um, up on flat top mount four six hundred um, up on flat top and uh, a couple of years later Brian actually sold the place so we moved it and it took a short period of rest uh, until finding another spot over on uh, which is now Trump uh, winery uh, alongside the the clubs 14676 at that spot so there it has set and run for the past well, however many years, up until just recently, it just recently got a, a new move, <clears throat> but uh, it's set there. And this is the amazing thing. Um, started out with a commercial repeater, um, a high pro, and it started developing problems. <clears throat> and uh, so actually patched together a pair of Alenco DR235s. So for the past 18 years, 224600 has been a pair of DR235s of which the transmit radio has always run at high power. Always. <coughs> and some summers completely without a fan. Last <laughs> summer, but those, those of you who have actually been up to the little one hole shed up on top of uh, Trump Winery there understand the environment. Um, in the fall, <coughs> when the repeater was removed, <laughs> I, was, I found out that the fan had not been run all summer long. And there were a number of occasions when uh, the repeater went through a number of timeouts because somebody either had their mic hung up or there was something else amiss in the system. So all I can say is I will take the serial number off of that rig and send it to Alenka and say, buddy, you nailed it when you made this one right here. And that one's probably going to go to some kind of museum because that is definitely not what uh, a mobile rig should be designed to do. And under those conditions, absolutely amazing. Um, Works well in an environment where there's not a lot of RF anyway. So right now, um, we have a hub site, a UHF hub site, that links three repeaters that are currently uh, in. There were four. One, uh, the site was lost due uh, to some land management uh, changes. But um, right now, there is 600, which is here uh, in Charlottesville on Carter. Uh, yeah, there you go. There's a synopsis. Uh, 22458, which is down on Rocky, uh, the same mountain where the uh, 147330 machine is located. Most of you have been around the area long enough, you know where that one's at. Uh, then 224300, which has been on Laird's for a number of years. In fact, I don't even know the full history of that one. Um, I was donated the Elliott site several years back. And uh, that is now in, so uh, and it's it's playing quite well. Um, the two two four five hundred is back on the air at Lowell's place, KK four PH. Sort of. Sort of. Um, he will be. Uh, he does have one or two sites that will get that back on the air in a broader coverage area before long. Um, Mark W four MEV, who owns the two two four four two in Richmond. Um, back when we were running IRLP as a link, wanted to come in. Um, he has now gotten the uh, all-star link on that. So his machine stays linked in full time, unless there's some kind of a problem. So if you're traveling uh, 64 west out of Charlottesville and you have a reasonable 220 rig, you can typically overlap. It's usually around Gum Spring, around Oilville. Oil around Bill. Around Oilville, you can reliably get into Fort yep. and carry in the Richmond. Um, Jason and I do a lot of traveling in our work, so we've kind of tested the sites and <laughs> kind of know whether it's, where it's going to work, where it's not going to work. Um, actually, 22458, there's places where 58 and 600 kind of go back and forth on 64 uh, heading out that way. Obviously, if you're headed across the mountain, 
into the valley. Um, as soon as you cross the top, uh, 2243 plays really well, and that typically carries down to about Roanoke and will carry at this point. Um, other than a couple little blips, has been carrying actually north of Winchester, so uh, quite a bit of coverage to the north. Um, yep, yeah, we'll show you some of the coverage plots here in a little bit. Uh, 22428 is up in Williamsport, PA. Reconnected again through Jason's effort with Facebook, and now their 22428 is on All Star and stays uh, connected to us full time. Um, the 22426 in Durham sets us the same spot. Some of you that have uh, maybe in with band openings have uh, been into the 147225. Uh, the, uh, that comes in right now, that is on um, uh, IRLP. And uh, it will probably be moving to All Star Link in the future. It's not on full time. It's it's not in the link because that's part of the link when they do the possum trot net in the mornings. But it's typically on uh, after I think eight o'clock. Yeah, I think like eight in the morning. It, it's it's on ninety percent of the time. It's linked to us. Right. Yep. So um, just recently, a uh, couple guys who have gotten interested that are down near the Gloucester area have put in all-star simplex nodes. Uh, so they are, uh, they are typically on most of the time, but that's just been within the last two weeks. Um, one, one of them will be putting up a 220 repeater in the Gloucester area. Um, he's got most of the equipment to do it. It's just like everybody else, a matter of time. And uh, you want to mention the Oklahoma? Yeah. Um, yeah, we can show that on the bubble chart. Uh, there's other <coughs> here, but I guess before I move from this side, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, when's All Star? Okay, we'll get to that at the end. So good question. Yeah. That, that's that's yeah, coming. So we'll we'll address that. Email me either of you a PowerPoint or a PDF. <coughs> Besides having a video, I could post this to our website on the recent presentations because sure. this is a great summary of all the repeaters sure. in the area. And. Um, <coughs> There, <laughs> we've been talking about it for a couple of years, and, and I'm just not very computer savvy, but we'd really like to have a website that would help with that so that you'd have a spot to go to if you want to learn about, um, you know, the, the system in the area and outside links to other stuff, too, as well. So, uh, all right. Uh, Oklahoma's not on the bullet chart in the slide. Oh, it's not? This is when I took the slide. Okay, all right. So, um, there is a group out in Oklahoma that has um, a network of 220 only repeaters. And they're all grouped by way of the All-Star, which we'll explain here in a little bit what All-Star is. And uh, they're not in all the time, but they're in most of the time. Certainly Friday evenings, if anyone uh, wants to participate in a broad net, uh, it's 10 o'clock our time, which a lot of times I'm asleep by that time Friday night. It used to be that I was still out somewhere, but now I'm usually asleep. But anyway, 10 o'clock our time, if you can access any one of the repeaters in the group, you can, you can, be, you can be a part of that net. Um, and I think there's a couple other nets, too. I'm thinking there's one on. Basically, for the Oklahoma connection, <clears throat> Oklahoma, we're, real quick, we're trying to grow 220 and 900 megahertz. But we don't want it to get to like the wind system, or we don't want it to get crazy out of control. And Oklahoma has kind of got the same idea. We we were having clashes between like our drive times in the morning, and you know when they were needing to use their system. So what we ended up working out right now is at <clears throat> six o'clock in the evening our time, their system connects into us, and then it will stay connected all the way until 6 o'clock in the morning, our time. So that that leaves our drive time and their drive time separate so that the, the systems aren't just crazy. And then during the off-peak time, everything's connected together. Um, it's kind of how we've kind of flowed it out to work reasonably well. Um, but there, again, there's, yeah, there's six machines in Oklahoma, all 220, that they stay linked together all the time, ours stay linked together all the time, and then we merge the two networks in and out. Um, and I'll go over that here after a bit. Yeah, we actually, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, of course, it's like any system. There's times that there's a lot of dormancy, nobody there. And then sometimes there's almost too many people there. Right, Ron? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, I just wanted to hear you say it. 
So uh, there's too many people over there, I just turn that off. <laughs> but uh, no, and and honestly, it's it's not. I mean, I get it. We're all we're all different. Uh, you know, we all have a different makeup, so um, it's not for everybody. And yeah, I've been a part of some of the really large link systems that it's just like, you know, just to talk local back and forth, it's like it's really not even any room to do that. And initially that's what happened with us in Oklahoma. They have so little bit of talk time that when our system linked in and there's four or five of us at a time, sometimes maybe six or seven, it's just like, wait a minute, that's just too much traffic. You know, it's like, no, we need to change. So we've kind of set it up with the way that the All-Star works. It's easy to link in and out. Um, and he said, look, everybody be in control of their own system. If it gets too active, then pull the plug. And when you're ready, come back in. Let me take this slide, the next slide, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. I've All got right. a bubble chart on my phone for you if you need it. Do you want me to email it to you? Uh, no, I've, got, I've actually got a bubble chart coming up. Okay. Yeah. Um, see, I guess everybody can hear me without the microphone. i got a big mouth. So. <laughs> um, what, yeah, we're looking at, in front of you. <laughs> what we're looking at right here is... These are, these are our internet connections, okay, for linking, all right? We've got our all-star node number, 47046, that from any all-star internet connected repeater or private node, little micro node, can connect to us by way of that, okay? For now, we've also got IRLP. We're, we're kind of phasing IRLP out, but we're not in any big hurry to do so, but it's it's likely going out, um, but we we do stay connected to the 9212 IRLP reflector as well, and that's how that's how North Carolina comes in currently. And then we've also got thanks to AJ, we've got uh, the Echolink connected in. So if you pull up his call sign on Echolink, it comes in because uh, you have one or two on there, AJ. This uh, is the KE4 AJM-R slash R. Okay, yeah. So, search his call sign, you'll see the slash R1 on there also, and that can bring you in. So if you have your, your you know, the Echo Link on your phone or what have you, which we have several people that check in while they're out traveling around and stuff like that. But basically, these are our internet linking methods. And then the next one, this is an all-star bubble chart. At the time I took this snapshot, there wasn't a whole lot of connections because, honestly, I was trying to hurry up and get this done and everything else. Um, this changes, it can change from minute to minute, really, because how you see it's in a, a star shape, how all star gets its name. Our main node here, and then when people connect in, um, see we've got K4SKD, that's a simplex node, he's connected in. Uh, N3XXH, that's the uh, Williamsport, you know, it says which one they are, and those are all connected <coughs> in. Now, what's neat is, let's say, all right, this is, let's, let's go with this one, uh, K4SKD. Let's say somebody wants to talk directly to K4SKD. They pull him up on, on the internet by way of All-Star. You can go online on the web and, and see the active nodes and search and everything else. If somebody connects into him while he's connected to us, that just brings him into the, the, the entire system, whoever would connect in. If somebody else was connected to them, it grows and grows and grows. So it kind of gets, it can get to the point where you can get out of control real easily with people just connecting and connecting and connecting. But that's why we've got, it's like where Tim and I and a few other people can admin the system. We can go in by way of our phone and say, like, nope, kick, you know, off, 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 you know, to, to kind of keep a manage on it. We can block things out, but, I mean, we're, we're an open bunch of guys, so we don't want to block anybody. Well, and that being said, and I'll, I'll add to that, I mean, the, the whole idea here is there's, there's just bukus of 70 centimeter and 2 meter machines out. So our whole idea is here, we don't want to really necessarily keep anybody out, but the idea is is to participate by either by way of 900, 220, or 1.2, the unused frequencies, because there's lots of the other. And we've had more 220 users. Um, here's a couple of pictures. These are coverage maps. Uh, bear in mind, coverage maps, when they show the coverage. Go by the red, forget the yellow. Yeah. 
And so, it still take a grain of salt. Right. And what you have to realize that the coverage map basically is antenna to antenna with absolutely no obstruction in between. So as you look at a coverage map, there's going to be areas where, where it's, oh, wow, that's really good coverage. Well, you're down behind the hill. You can't hear anything. No, it's really not. But if you're out in the open where you have nothing in between you, <laughs> Um, that's the kind of coverage to expect. So there you can see uh, 224, 600 uh, really does cover pretty well. I'd, I'd say mm, it's borderline right now being right. exaggerated in its coverage right. area. Right now, all right, this, this coverage plot is based on decent numbers, but in all honesty, 224.6 has a hearing problem. Uh, it can easily out talk what it can hear. We've tried to get that as matched as we can, but it does have a hearing problem. So everything in the red, yeah, you can hear 600, pretty much everything, everywhere in the red. Getting back into it, probably not so much. Um, I'm working on it. That's, that's a, you know, that, and that's, yeah. a, that's a fair uh, analysis. So, uh, and it could, could easily cover much more than that, but uh, it's no sense in making more transmitter signal if you can't work it. Um, so 22458 on Rocky. Um, Rocky is at an elevation. The mountaintop there is right at 4,000 feet. And um, the antenna at Rocky faces somewhat east, southeast, um, but has really good coverage. Rocky is a quiet spot. Um, there is a commercial receiver uh, on the repeater there, and uh, it hears very well. Typically, 22458, I can almost rest assured, if you're running a quarter wave in 25 watts and you're in a mobile, if you can hear 22458 signal, it's hearing you. Yeah. So you can stretch it down into the noise. Um, Big time. Excellent, excellent spot. Um, 224300, and uh, most of you are probably familiar for heading out 64 west, you get to a point just right outside of Fishersville. If you look off toward the western mountains, the Alleghenies, there used to be a big, like, billboard up on the mountain. Um, it's a commercial site up there. It's, uh, it's right up behind uh, Buffalo Gap up on the mountain. That site is at nigh on to 4,500 feet. Um, there's a lot of commercial stuff up there, and there's more to come. So and That beats the tar uh, out of it. And, and so a lot of these sites dealing with the noise that's at the site is, is it's a killer. You can make a transmitter, no problem, but to make it here is, is a real problem. But this is probably one of the more prominent sites just based on its elevation. It covers up and down the valley yeah, you can very see, well. You can see the 81 corridor is flooded, and it works phenomenal down 81. And that's, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty fair synopsis there. Maybe a little exaggerated out toward Richmond, but not much. I was actually... I actually found a couple spots sending down at the Richmond Raceway in the mobile that I was able to get into 224-300, and that is uh, by air miles. That's that's pushing 100 air miles away. So that's that's not bad for 220. You like the next one? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is just, um, and I'll actually walk over and show here. Um, here. There's there's another gentleman. Will that work? Is it a pointer? Push the button. It's on top, one side. There you go. Hey, looky there, man. Cool. Um, so, there is another gentleman we've gotten to be pretty good friends with that has some great coverage repeaters. Um, one is currently not on the air, but this is showing the mix of the repeaters, the Richmond and, and our repeaters here. Um, and then uh, there's another repeater that will be coming on the air at some point uh, in uh, Fredericksburg. 22474. Um, and then there's uh, another one here, uh, 22428, that's at Linden, which kind of overlooks, um, well, actually overlooks Berryville for the most part, just to the east of it. And then there's going to be another machine that'll probably come on back in the, on the ridge near West Virginia. So this, this kind of just gives a, a coverage plot at some point. These probably won't be all full time linked, but will be linkable so that in a period of time, that's just the machines right now, uh, or coming right now, not including down here in Gloucester, the Simplex, and there's another machine down here uh, just outside of Hampton that will probably be coming in the mix before long. So the, the 
hopefully at some point you'll be able to run from Stanton to Virginia Beach and be in mobile 220 coverage. No, Winchester is, to Virginia and Beach. Yeah. Winchester and actually um, 22458, there's a couple little blank spots, but 22458 carries right now just about down into Greensboro, no problem. Obviously in the... Uh... <laughs> okay. So um, this is kind of Jason's, and honestly, I think I don't want to don't want to keep anybody too long. So let's stop right there. Are there any uh, questions from what's been shown? Um, just just uh, alleviate my confusion. So Carter's Mountain, Rocky, and Elliott's Knob are RF linked with 900 megahertz. No, UHF. 440. UHF. Right. What, what's the 900 megahertz that you're talking about? Well, 900 megahertz isn't in it right now, but it, it will be adding some 900 meg repeaters in the near future. Originally, we were looking at trying to probably do a, a link hub with 900, and it just that didn't, didn't work out too well based on the situation of where we needed it to be at. So right now, they are linked by a UHF hub. Okay. Um, and then... And then uh, Maybe you're going to talk about this later, but briefly, uh, the advantage of an of all star uh, linking as opposed to IRLP. Yeah, I'll, I'll yep. get into that. Yeah, yep. So, yes, sir. Um, so, so, yeah. Right, so, go yeah. ahead. You had, yeah. One is this FM digital? Is this FM, FM, FM analog. analog. There are a lot of digital stuff out there, but this is this is FM analog. Secondly. Pardon my ignorance, but how do you work with repeater templates? You don't? Uh, take the offset off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, how does, it, how does it work that you've got a repeater that's you transmit and receive the same frequency? Oh, for the simplex nodes? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Your turn. Um, since, since everything is done for our, for our all star or our our internet linking in general is done through a, a, just a little little microcomputer, okay? Which that does duplex on the internet side, okay? The RF connection to that computer is just simplex. It's just the same frequency goes out as what it hears. It can't do, you know, full duplex because it's if it's transmitting, it can't hear. You know, it's just the way you know, radio works. Um, so what we've done in, in uh, especially in a lot of the All Star is, you know, <laughs> yeah, this is help trying to get not to get too deep. Basically, I've had I have it set where it it emulates a repeater. So when a signal comes into it, it hears that signal, and then as soon as you let off the the key, the PTT, the radio sees that you let off. There's no longer a signal there. It then immediately transmits back out a courtesy tone and a slight hang time, so it, it emulates a, a it, repeater. It, it sounds like a repeater. Yeah. There's nothing coming out other than what it's designed to do, but it really helps if people are trying to make use of a simplex node. Obviously, if you're using a simplex node, you're only going to hear the other person if you can hear them simplex. So if you can't hear them simplex, both of you have no idea <laughs> yeah. who's who's talking when. So that is kind of the downside. There, there is a downside to that. But in the emulation of it, you can create a return and a courtesy tone, just like when you unkey your local repeater. It has a certain length of, of hang time or a courtesy tone if it's desirable. And that way you know that you've activated the simplex node. That's yeah. on a mountaintop, so that's why you have the repeater, right? Uh, no, these are, these are home nodes, people with home at home. Aren't you using duplex nodes? If you're running full duplex, you have to have filters, cans, and that's a bit pricey. And honestly, I'm poor. <laughs> so for each one, for a low profile access point, I mean, you can think of the, the simplex nodes as just an access point to the system. For a low profile, yeah, if, if somebody wants to put the money into it and build out a full-fledged repeater, I'll help. But... <laughs> How many of you know of the hotspots? 
DMR, hot spots, yeah. fusion, hot spots, same thing. All -Star, what, All Star is just different. It's, here, it's a different version. Here's, right? here's one I built out of crap in the junk drawer. I'll, I'll show that to you. So yeah, I mean it's I mean it, it's it's kind of one and the same in regards to that because most of those are just like a very low uh, a low power, typically on UHF, that you're just talking to your node, your node's talking back to your handheld or radio, whatever it is. It's the same design except okay, you can put it on an outside antenna, most like with DMR, because if it's uh, fine division, it's kind of hard to really. Yeah. stretch that out and they usually come very very low power with this you can actually do it just like IR, IRLP does the same thing the the thing about all-star is the way that it operates <clears throat> yeah I'll um, get into all that yeah yeah and actually that's probably that's that another, would be another whole yeah another so whole it's, real RP, it's linking via the internet yes right? internet radio linking project yep yep and all-star is just uh, a different way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly go over that here in just a minute. I'm, I know we're trying to. Um, real quick, because uh, I know we probably do want to move this along. This is what we've got coming up in the future. Um, one thing that we didn't mention is that all three of our repeater sites, the, the, our, all three of our local repeater sites, we no longer use a standard repeater controller. We don't have a hardware-based controller like everybody's used to. Okay? We use... A Raspberry Pi, little little Raspberry Pi, and since we're using a, a UHF backhaul, we actually you know we also have our UHF links. We've got two interfaces that plug into the Raspberry Pi, one that controls the transmit and receive radios, and one that controls our link radio. Okay. That being said, we're migrating everything over to get. We're going to keep our UHF links in place and keep all that coordinated just like it is and everything. For a backup, our primary linking is actually going to be going by 5 gig microwave links. Because um, it's, it's essentially voice over IP is, is really all, of it, all it is. So we're going to do 5 gig microwave links, which we've already started putting some in, in place for all the sites. One, because we've got a really bad latency problem with our, our hub especially, and anybody's used system knows that people beat heads all the time. But So we're going to try to do away with that, plus this will give a lot more control for, honestly, for me and a few others. Um, then we're also, since we're doing the, the five gigs linking, we're just making our own network by five gig. We're going to try to integrate some web applications into it, specifically like site cameras and one main place where people can go online and log in and see the status of the system at a glance. What's connected, what's not, what's, you know, everything. Um, then, yes, where Tim touched on, we're doing the, uh, working on more 220 repeaters both in and out of the state. Uh, Tim's been heading up working with other repeater owners to try to coordinate in and as time and everything allows, we're trying to bring more in. We've got a few hopefully coming. I can't divulge where, when, who, how, but we're working on it. Um, with the above things, I'm working on improving the audio. The audio on the system's not bad. It's not exactly perfect either. So I'm I'm slowly working that as we're working everything else. We're trying to get everything worked in. And then, of course, with doing, going that way, everything will be a lot more secure for, you know, anybody that, which we don't have a problem too much with QRM, but it, it adds a little bit extra layer of security for that. Um, and that's really the, the biggest part of what we're looking at right now. Anything you want to expand on with the future? No, I just uh, with with the uh, hopefully with the uh, with the microwave links. The the hope there is to cut down on the latency between the uh, between the audio, because as it stands right now, <clears throat> just within our local RF link system, um, AJ hosts the internet side, so anything that comes from the internet goes out of the radio that's at AJ's to the hub site. So the hub site has to decode the PL, 
that hold repeater lights off, sends out the traffic to the adjoining sites. The received link radios have to decode and in turn light up the repeaters. So when you have people on different repeaters, there's a, there's a latency because you've got what? One, two, three, four. You've got four hits that basically happen before that final transmitter lights off and you hear that voice. So there's some latency in that. With the five <coughs> links, that'll, that'll, through the use of the All-Star, that'll cut that out. And just like I think you guys are using the, uh, the audio delay boards, when you have two repeaters going with audio delay boards, what happens is, is if you listen on the input of your local repeater, you're actually hearing the guy talking to the repeater before that output comes. It almost sounds like an echo. So in essence, what it does is it captivates that audio, sends it to the other repeater, and it sounds seamless on the other side. You can't tell that the guy, when he let off the key, he's still talking over here, then it drops. It's kind of that kind of deal. So with the five gig links, that will, that will hopefully cut down to where it'll be kind of seamless, as well as coming in from the internet side, there won't be a link radio to transmit that anymore. That's coming straight in off of the internet side. It's right there. Um, <coughs> as far as the overall linking is concerned, now what it does is it gives you two possibilities. The, the microwave links would be the preferred because of how they operate. Plus the fact that oh, no. setting with the laptop right there, you can actually go in. You don't need to go to the site or have the, the controller on your bench anymore. It's right here. You can move everything right there one, instead of it. It's one other thing that I, I forgot to mention, which it's going to freak people out. And anybody that's listened to the system has probably already heard some <coughs> of it. All right. All Star is a full duplex system. Okay. If you have, now granted, the repeaters are not. Okay. But the linking is, if you have one person on 5.8 and one person on 600 and somebody else is on 300, these two key up at the same time, then it now both conversations come out on 300. So one person won't get completely shut out like what happens with most repeaters now. The third party will hear both sides. They may not be able to figure out what they say because there's two conversations at once. But at least the other party will be able to say, hey, you doubled with so-and-so. I heard this person more than this person or what have you. Um, until you hear that on a radio, it, it'll, it'll yeah. freak you out. It's first interesting time you because yeah. if somebody gets into a long-winded uh, key down, um, you know, you could actually pass traffic back and forth. <laughs> yeah. With a while while someone's going on, and, it, and that's not a battle of who has the strongest signal. With RF, it's whoever has the strongest signal wins the wins the fight to the receiver, and that takes it over. But with the with the All Star, it's it's just like your telephone. Both of you can sit there and talk back and forth at the same time, and you know our cell phones. It's like I'm talking, and they start talking. Wait a minute, did I start first? They start first, and then he's like, okay, all right, you go. <laughs> So it all starts kind of the same. It works primarily in the go. same way. You can, yep. you can hear both sides. Um, all right, try to step it up a little bit for you. I apologize about the picture being so, so blurry. Oh, it was just my eyes. No, that's because the camera on my phone is broke. It's got a big hole where the camera's supposed to be. Um, <laughs> Do you think you'll be able to finish in about 10 or 15 minutes? Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, we'll wrap. Yep. Um, this, again, sorry, it's blurry. This is our 224.600 repeater. At the top, is the actual uh, uh, was it the spec MX800 uh, Australian repeater commercial rig? Then the, uh, below that is our, our link radio for our, our hub, and then down on the, the very bottom is the power supply. And this is a little bit better picture. It's a Raspberry Pi running the Ham VoIP All Star software. That one is the controller for or the interface for the repeater, and the other one is the interface for the link radio. So you have to have internet access at nope. the site, you don't? Nope. No. We don't have internet at the site. Wow. Um, it's, it's a standalone, the software is written, so it's a standalone controller, or if you have internet, you can have simplex access or duplex, whatever you want. Yeah. Yep, but you don't have to have internet. We don't have internet currently at this site yet. And it, and it, and it also operates just like your standard repeaters do with, with control? You can go in by DTMF and make controls just like you would with any regular controller. Obviously, if you have internet at the site, you can internet into it as well. With, so, uh, with our link system the way that it is right now, each radio has its own IP address. There's nothing else that's going to connect to that. Nowhere. You can't get into it. It's just like a locked, um, like a locked room. 
Could you open if you had internet available to do that? Yeah, you could break the repeater out and say, hey, I'm going to go take off on the link radio and go connect to All-Star node. You can do that too. So the thing about All-Star is there's so much more that you can do with it. You Besides, you can through the internet, right? Absolutely. Or, so or, 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 go, or go take your node and go right to it and plug into it. So if you have internet, that's a wonderful thing. You don't have to have internet, and it still can be treated just like a normal controller with the tailoring of the audio levels, taking radios going from, you know, from flat audio to... Real quick, Tim mentioned we had the, the Alinko TYTs for 600 for 2246, <coughs> or the Alinko uh, DR235. We've taken... All right. So far, the radios that I've played with, with connecting to All Star and building repeaters out of, the Elinkos, the TYT 9000s, uh, the little Baofeng 888 handhelds. Um, I took an old, let's see, uh, the old ADI handheld, if you remember those things. Um, yeah, that project kind of went up in smoke, but it did work for a little while. Um, the, uh, the Tates, uh, Motorola's, uh, what else we got? The, the MX800, the, the Simoco uh, radios, the, the System M230 Chinese radios, and the Bridgecom BCM320s. Whatever you want to use, you can pretty much use it. Um, so that's where the All-Star comes in great because it's, A, it's, it's open source. All right, the software is open source. It's all free. The hardware is whatever you've got laying around for radios. And the hardware for the All-Star itself it's a $35 Raspberry Pi, and the interface can be something as simple as a, a little Chinese sound fob that you get off of eBay for five bucks. And that can actually get a radio up and going. Now, if you have a repeater site and you want to link to a repeater site all star, then you actually need the internet, right? You need a network, yes. A network. Yeah, that's like where the five gigs comes in. We're, we're building out our own, our own network. Which, and then the five gig radius connected, so okay. Yeah. Or like we're doing right now with you've got two radios and it's one all star computer and two it's technically two nodes that come off of the one all the one Raspberry Pi. One controls the repeater, one controls your link radio if you wanted to link them. So you don't need your internet to do your linking. I understand. Yeah. Fair enough question. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's correct now you're you're going to be subject to whatever rules that particular right. node owner has implemented um I've got some rules buried in the coding for our hub, for our, our 47046, but that's just to kind of make sure it doesn't get out of control. Mr. Dave, you had a question. If somebody wanted to come join you, could you recommend an inexpensive HT or an inexpensive mobile rig to look at? Alfangs or TYTs? We're, we're not. Or, well, what's the word? It's not, I'm trying to think of. We're not Motorola snobs. <laughs> that trimander we had at the Christmas party was $35 from Amazon. It has 220 on it. Yeah. So it, it's, not, it's not a large investment to come fly. 20, I think we saw them for $23. This one's the At the awards, the awards the thing. Sorry, it's awards. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't on it. Yeah. 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 That's true. Right. Like Tim's TYP. That's about $100 or nothing. Uh, that that is was 80 bucks. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you can get, you know, a, a 220 valve thing, which what, the 222 meters, do they still make those? Or the, the yeah. tri band? Yeah. I don't want to do it. The tri band valve things are what, 40 bucks? No, we've seen 2080 and round 80 on special. And don't be surprised if you get one and somebody says, man, your audio sucks. <laughs> well, those Oshangs, the 2 meter 220s, are not, not Oshangs. Yeah, it is Oshang. Those aren't too bad. Yeah. The detachable thing. Yep. Yeah. Again, you know, it's like everything else, you can get what you pay for. Because so, which comes a step up, right? No, it's a step in the trash can. Really? <laughs> I'll, I'm sorry, I, I will, if anybody wants to argue Bridgecom, come, come see me. Well, Lincoln would be a good, allegedly, they're working on this office. 
Uh, any other questions real quick? I know we've done all of it up kind of good. That five-year marriage link, um, are you going <clears> to <throat> use broader than group program with directional antennas? Or? Well, the, uh, the five-year boots are, are primarily the ubiquity dishes, where it's the radio and dish right. all in one. Okay. And um, at each site, since we're, we're wanting to have other stuff in the site, like cameras and, and things of that sort, um, each site has its own network switch. Right. So, again, the, all the all the IP addressing and stuff, well, all, it's not a big secret, I'm doing all the IP addressing static. And every, every tier of equipment per site has its own set of rules for IP addressing. And then it's just piped through a network switch and forward it on down, and then we will, as soon as we can get the, the rest of the logistics done, uh, one central location, and it's Honestly, it's where our UHF hub is. That will be our main internet connection point with the routing and everything done right there, and the firewall and all that stuff. Yes, sir. How are you funding this? Your big pockets. <laughs> we take. Okay, I don't have any kids, and I've got one hobby: ham radio. So, um, but we've had we've had over the years. Actually, we've had um, we've had numerous people that have donated. A lot of people have donated their, their, their graces of their, their place. You know, AJ's given us a spot, given us internet. I mean, that's wonderful. Um, I've had people that have donated cash, donated time, um, you know, and... I um, donated good looks. Yeah, and, and, I, and I mean, I've, I've, I've chosen not to make it a club because um, in a club environment, I mean, I started out kind of like, all right, this is kind of, you know, just a couple people's ideas and dreams that had same like mind, and it's it's just grown from there. So, um, and I mean, you know, people gravitate to, to where they're where they feel comfortable at, and it's not for everybody. And it's certainly not for everybody. And that I'm saying, I'm going to say a plug just for ham radio. Seriously, if you hear somebody throw out a call, I don't care if it's two meter, four forty, two twenty, wherever it's at and you have 30 seconds of time, stop and say, hey, I recognize your call, just wanted to recognize I don't have time to talk to you right now, but thanks for making a call. It's that simple. 